Good morning and welcome back to the channel. Thanks for joining us. Today we're going to be building a hoop house. It's a beautiful day here. Um, a hoop house is usually used to extend the season um, both before and after the summertime. So usually in the spring and the fall when the weather is colder. Um, right now we have greens in our tunnel, but usually in the summertime we also, also use it to trellis our tomatoes. And they grow really well like that. They climb on the ceiling and um, it also helps protect it from, protect the plants from weather, um, from cold, frost, from rain. Make sure you stay tuned for the whole video because we share some important tips and tricks throughout and it might seem like a little bit of a daunting task to build something like what you see behind me here, but it really isn't that complicated as long as you follow the right steps. So thanks for watching, hope you enjoy. The design of a hoop house is pretty straightforward. It's essentially just metal pole frames with poly plastic stretched over top. The nice part about this design is that you can adapt it to whatever length that you need for your application. The poles are spaced five feet apart and the poles are constructed using 25 feet of tubing. So in this case, we're using top rail fence post and so they come in 10 foot sections. So we use two and a half sections of pipe to make each hoop. When this is bent out, it comes to be exactly 16 feet across, which encompasses four beds for our size garden. The hoops are anchored to the ground using rebar, which is pounded in about two feet and then stays sticking up above the ground approximately 10 inches. Once all the hoops are set upon their rebar anchors, it's time to run webbing from an anchor point on one end of the hoop house to the other end of the hoop house. This webbing, it's securely attached to one anchor point and then wraps once around each of the hoops. Following that, the plastic poly is stretched over top of the hoop house and then it's secured using ropes that go in a zigzag fashion from one hoop across and up to the next hoop, and then back across and up to the third hoop. This is repeated for each side of the hoop house, and so this is how you create uh, the caterpillar type look, which is why they are sometimes named caterpillar tunnels. Before you get too far ahead in your hoop house building process, you need to decide which type of rope anchoring system you're going to use. And uh, as far as I'm concerned, there's two options, though if you've got some other brilliant idea, let us know in the comments below. So first off, and in my opinion the best method, is to make these little cam plates that lock onto the rebar. I like it better because it's more adjustable, less issues with the tubing like the poles that you're gonna make hitting the carabiners and that sort of thing. However, they are difficult to make if you don't have uh, metal working tools like a piranha and a large hole punch because to drill those three quarter inch holes is, uh, well, it's difficult. So the other option is these, is essentially just welding uh, half inch or larger nuts onto the rebar. And it's really easy if you have a welder. Um, really fast too so we decided to try that out for our second tunnel um, but we built our first tunnel using these cam plates and after using the two like I said I would prefer the cam plates pictured here you can see the rebar the access to anchor for the hoop house there's one of these per each pole end per se so on our current hoop house there are 10 poles, Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, And so there's a piece of rebar in the ground under each one of those poles that acts as a anchor for the pole. 
And then also, um, you can see on these rebars, we've welded on half inch nuts. And so these nuts act as uh, an anchoring point to attach um, the rope to. We use a little carabiner for that. The poles we use to put together this hoop house are actually used to put together chain link fences and their top rail galvanized posts, one and a quarter inches in diameter. This makes them fairly easy to bend by hand if you don't have any type of powered bender, whether that be a hydraulic pipe bender or a pipe roller or any other sort of means. Um, last year, I bent all of these pipes by hand and this year we're gonna modify my jig that I made uh, to be able to bend them using the bucket of our tractor. Okay, so a brief explanation of my pipe bending setup. What we've got is a home built pipe bender. Um, it anchors into the hitch of the truck, any vehicle really with a two inch hitch. And then um, this is one and a half inch uh, by one eighth inch wall tubing which fits this one and a quarter inch fence top rail perfectly, comes through, and we're gonna be using the tractor today to bend it. Uh, last year when we built our other house, I bent them all by hand and uh, needless to say, it was a lot of work and I was incredibly sore afterwards. So this year I used my brain, came up with a method to bend with a tractor instead, let it do the work and I think it'll be a lot better. Um, what you can see here is I've got this 25 inch long piece of wood. We make our, we make our hoops uh, 25 feet long. So two and a half, uh, yeah, there you go. Two and a half uh, tubes of this top rail fence. And um, we put 11 bends in it so that the peak of the roof is, is a bend as well. So that allows more water to flow off and what we do here, we've done some calculations. 25 inches is the amount that uh, we need between every bend. And then also what you can see here, I've got a little bit of a jig set up. This is a two by four, which is three and a half inches thick. And um, I calculated that we need each bend to be precisely 16 degrees. And in order to achieve that at 12 inches out from the bending point, we need to have a three and a half inch vertical separation. So all I did was a little bit of trigonometry to figure that out. Um, if you have an actual pipe bending system, all the more power to you. I tried to buy one yesterday, but they were out of stock. So um, a hydraulic pipe bender or a pipe roller would be incredible, make this job a whole lot easier, but we don't have one. Um, we haven't found that the kinks cause any negative effects in terms of stability. Our structure is built just like this and it's sturdy one year later with crazy wind and snow load.
One more ratchet. That's good. Now we need to install two diagonal bracing ropes on each end of the hoop house. Tie them to the ground anchor and the hoops and then tape them to the hoops so they don't slide. This greenhouse plastic is a specialized product that is sourced from a greenhouse supply company. Pretty much any greenhouse supply company should carry this and what makes it unique like separate from say vapor barrier from the hardware store, aside from the fact that you get it in massive sheets, is that it is UV resistant, so it won't break down with sunlight over the years. You order it generally uh, custom sizes, so you tell them what you want. In our case, we added, uh, we had a 28 foot wide by 85 foot long piece and our tunnel dimensions uh, if you remember the hoops, they're 25 feet uh, long, so that gives you a couple feet on either side. And then the length of the tunnel in this case is 65 feet. So there's the 45 feet from the actual hoops themselves, and then 10 feet roughly on either end for the distance out to the anchors. So you can see that um, you really do start to need that extra poly fabric. You want some at the ends because what you see uh, Sharice doing here is she's bunching it up and, and then I'm gonna go and put a rope around it and we're gonna cinch it tight and then we're gonna stuff it down in between those T-bars which it's cinched tight. And that's gonna be how we anchor the ends down. So you really do need that little bit extra because we're, we'll end up also then folding it back around and securing it to itself. So let's just put things in fast forward a bit and we'll show you what it looks like.
So these tie down ropes get installed in a zigzag fashion. Um, there is one rope starting on this end pole here. It goes up and over, gets anchored on the far side to the next pole over and tossed back and anchored down onto the third pole in. So it gets, starts on one, so if you're on one side, you start, toss the rope, skip a pole, toss it back and tie to the, to the next pole. But then uh, on the far side, you're doing the same thing. So you're gonna start here on, on this side here, you're gonna tie a rope onto this first pole, toss it over, and then it's gonna get tied in to the second pole. You can see it coming down and then thrown back over and tied in to the third pole. So this zigzag fashion is how we go about securing the poly. For knots, we use a bowline knot for a lot of things on this structure, particularly for these where we don't want them to slip tight or come undone. So if we ever do need to undo it, the bowline is able to be undone easily, but it's a very good strong knot. So bowline on here, and then on the area where it just comes down, and then back up. You just clip that into the carabiner so it can slide back and forth like so. And then for the final tying it down, you're gonna use a trucker's hitch, which will involve taking the rope, threading it through the carabiner, tying a slip knot with a twist up here. You do a half twist. Grab the rope behind, pull it through. Send this end of the rope up and through the loop you created. And then this gives you some uh, leverage action. You're able to pull down on this until it's good and tight, like so. And then you're gonna finish it off with half hitches on this section, like so and that prevents the rope from sliding up. And then you can take up the extra rope slack with a couple double half hitches around both of these ropes here. Makes it a bit more of a pain in the butt when it's time to adjust this if you ever need to, but it's not the worst thing in the world. It does keep it out of your way. Okay, there you go. Wash, rinse, repeat. Okay, well now that we got it done, let's go inside and have a look. Pull up the size here. Wow, it is nice and warm in here. You can see it all came together very smoothly. Got a nice straight line of the strap down the middle and it's good and tight. Poly all pulled tight. These structures are really cool because they're quite inexpensive. You can build it for under a thousand dollars Canadian and they go up really quick. Uh, our first time we built one probably took us eight hours, but this time it only took four. So there you go. Completed hoop house, 16 feet. How, how wide is it? Yeah, 16 feet wide and 45 feet long. Thanks for joining us today. And if you found this video helpful, please hit the like button below and subscribe for more farm equipment and repair related content.